So I've been asked about the effects of changing a user's SIP address in Skype for Business. It's also valid for Link 2013, of course. So I thought the simplest way is if we could just have a look and, and see what the effect is of changing them. So let's have a quick look at my lab here. I've got a single Skype for Business server here, and you can see that I've got you two users configured. There we go. I've got Andy Pandy, which is Andy Pandy at deathstar.co.uk. And I've also got Derek Trotter set up at Derek T at the force. So what you'll also see as well, I've two client machines set up. So this is um, Andy Pandy's machine. You can see that he's got Derek Trotter on his contact list. I've also got another machine here, which shows Derek Trotter logged in. And you can see, of course, that we have Andy Pandy logged in uh, and on the contact list. So if we pop back to the admin console, you'll see that, for example, Derek has a different format for his name. So I think the first thing that we'll do is try changing Derek's SIP um, address, just so it changes um, the Derek T to the normal format, which is first.last. So let's look at doing that bit first. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change Derek's uh, SIP address from Derek T to the first.last format that we've used elsewhere. Uh, before I do that, I'm just going to sign out of his Skype for Business client. There we go. And I'm going to pop back here and we'll change the user. So we'll open the user up. And what I'm going to do is change Derek T to Derek.trotter. There we go. You can see I've changed it now. So we're going to go into that first.last format and we'll click commit. And that will write those changes out for us. So now we've made that change, I'm going to jump across to Andy's machine and you'll see that Derek Trotter is showing offline, which is absolutely what we'd expect. But what I'm going to do is pop onto Derek's machine and you can see his sign-in address there is wrong. So let's change it to his new sign-in address. It should be Derek Trotter at theforce.co.uk. So let's sign in. There we go. So you can see that Andy's still on our contact list. So it hasn't affected and uh, hasn't affected Derek having his SIP address changed. But let's have a look and see what it looks like on Andy's contact list. Now you'll see that Derek's showing us offline, okay? But what we can do is if we go onto Andy's user and just sign out, and then sign in again, you'll see that Derek Trotter is now available. So what you can do is you can update a user's SIP name. Um, and it does flow through. And the reason for that is because the, um, the contacts are actually anchored by a unique identifier rather than the SIP address. Now, this works perfectly well for internal users, but bear in mind it won't work for people that you're federated with because they won't, they won't get that same kind of connectivity. Their connectivity is by that SIP name. So the next thing I wanted to have a look at is what what happens if we actually change the SIP domain? So that in this case, the force.co.uk, for example, what would happen if we changed it to Death Star? So let's have a look and see what effect that has and uh, whether it's similar. So what I'm going to do is, again, pop over to Derek's machine and just sign him out. There we go. And then from the admin console, I'm going to change Derek's details. There we go. So we're Derek Trotter at the force and I'm going to change the force and we're going to choose the deathstar.co.uk uh, and let's commit that. If we look at Andy here, you'll see that Derek's showing offline, which is what we'd expect because we, we've signed him out. But let's jump across to Derek's machine and we'll change his uh, sign-in address. Okay, and we're going to change him to Derek Trotter at deathstar.co.uk. There we go, and let's sign in. Okay, so changing the domain name, if you do it quite quickly, it seems to cause these issues with authentication. So what I'm gonna do is actually just sign out. You can see that I'm using Windows 7 here. Okay, I'm going to quickly log back in.
there we go now you'll see that Andy is on my contact list as I was expecting now if we jump across and have a look at Andy's again you'll see that Derek's now showing as presence unknown because that um, that identity's changed so let's see what happens now when we sign out sign in again you'll see that Derek's actually back so what you can take from this is that you can actually modify those SIP addresses okay um, Downside is you have to uh, make sure the clients are logged out to get those new addresses. The other oddities you might see are things around the um, address book. So if you are going to be making changes like this, I'd also update the address book. So, so for example, on my platform here, what I can do um, is just fire up the Skype for Business shell. And what I'm going to do is actually just delete my address books. There we are, I'm just gonna get rid of them. And what I'm gonna do is update my address books as well. There we go, it can take a little while to run, um, but that will make sure that the address books have all the right contacts in. So if you are going to be changing people's SIP addresses, if you're doing the odd one or two, I'm sure that's fine. Um, you know, and the clients will pick up the address changes as they happen overnight. But if you're going to be doing a lot, it might be worth um, just doing this manually. The other thing you need to think about, of course, is how to change the user's sign-in on the client. Because when you change their SIP address, obviously their, their sign-in on the client changes. So you need a way to update that as well. There is a way of doing it by script. Um, perhaps I'll, I'll explain that in another article. Anyway, I, I'm, it clarifies the behavior, uh, works well enough, and I've done this a few times, and it, it certainly seems to work well enough. So I hope you found that useful.